Hello, Michael here again. Uh, just thought I'd do a quick tutorial on volumetric lighting. Um, there's not a lot of information out there on the net on how to do this uh, in Maya with RenderMan. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty similar to your standard mental ray uh, process. If you've used mental ray, it's basically the same. Um, but if this is your first time rendering, um, this might be a good place to start and I'll give you some tips on how to sort of set up a scene uh, with some lights and stuff and do some cool stuff while you're at it. So you've got a cool looking character. Uh, this character is pretty cool looking. Um, this is not the best. There you can see some things are going terribly wrong with this particular mesh. It's an old model. You'll have to forgive me. Um, some things went wrong with the file, but I'm going to use them anyway because for this particular render, it's going to be quite dark. So it won't really matter if you can't see all the details. So you're going to click the effects drop down box uh, and then you're going to go to fluids and you're going to click 3D container. Um, if you click the options box, you get a bunch of options. Uh, this is how I've got it set. It's not super important to change anything at this stage. 10 by 10 by 10 is just the resolution of, uh, so but essentially like the density of the fluids, in this case, the volume of um, what we're gonna essentially be calling fog uh, for this particular example. So 10 by 10 by 10 is fine. And then X, Y, and Z, um, it's gonna be resized anyway, but five by five by five works. So we'll click apply, we'll close that. Um, so yeah, so essentially the goal is to get this box big enough to fit this fella inside of it. So we're just going to hit R to resize, bring it up and that's cool. I'm actually going to move this around a little bit throughout the tutorial and I'll explain why, um, in a moment, but for, as it is, this is probably just about right. I just want to get it so the camera doesn't get the, um, outside of the, of the, um, box there because you'll see it in the render, you'll see the, the cutoff where the, where the fog stops essentially. Um, you'll see that I've got a couple of lights set up here already, these are a couple of spots, so I'll get into that in a moment, so don't worry about that for this um, part. Uh, we're just gonna get set up here real quick with some fog. So uh, you've got your fluid selected, you go to your attribute ed editor, um, and you come down to contents method. You wanna change this to gradient, and then you'll see straight away that you get yourself a big old white box full of fluff. Um, in the density gradient, um, you could just use constant, uh, constant, but for this example, I'm going to make it a Y gradient. So it's going to make it more dense at the bottom, um, and thinner towards the top. And this is kind of useful because, uh, you can actually use it, um, like you can lower the density in, in the shot just by moving it up and down. So if you want to adjust at the bottom, like he's just walking through like a scary foggy cemetery, it's just there, or he's coming out like a really foggy sort of, I don't know, mall, who knows, wherever you want him to be. So we've got our, um, we've got our guy, we've got a couple of lights set up, which I'll go into those settings in a second. Um, so I'm just going to click render. Uh, before I do, I will warn you that your renders are going to take a long time when you're rendering uh, volumetric lighting just because it, there's a lot of data in here that's getting hit by light and it takes a little while for it to compute. So let's hit render and let's see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, you're not getting a lot. Um, this is because, I'm just gonna change this view actually to sRGB. So you see you're actually getting even less when you've got on sRGB. Um, now the reason for this is that the density of the volume um, is too high um, and you can see even in the preview that it's quite high. And there's a couple of ways you can fix this. Um, the quick and cheap way is just to whoop, is just to grab the thing that you actually want to grab, which is this guy here. Just move it back so there's less space between um, him, your model, and the edge of the box. That way there's, there's less um, particles that are being lit up and blocking your view of him. Um, now this might not always work for your particular uh, situation. This is like a pretty basic render. There's not a lot of stuff going on. I haven't built up an environment or anything like that. So um, this may not work for you. But this is one way to sort of think about it as well. If you want to have it quite dense, so the background's obscured, but um, you're still getting like a pretty good look at your character, this is one way to cheat it. But the better way to do it um, is you go down to contents detail and density 
um, this is where you can play with the the density of the the, the volume um, primitive so it's on 0.5 at the moment and obviously that's quite high if you bring it up it's going to make it almost completely opaque and take, make your renders take even longer um, and then if you bring it down to zero obviously you won't be able to see it so um, I think when I was testing this I just used 0.1 I'm actually going to move this forward a little bit as well just so I get a little bit more in um, and then we'll give this guy another render just line the camera up a little bit and actually hot tip um, make a quick camera bookmark there you go um, and then we'll click render and then we'll see how he looks now okay so um, yeah at like a pretty low sample rate that took about a minute minute and a half to render um, and we're getting a little bit better there um, you're getting some of that nice sort of fall off in the shadows um, in the atmosphere there which is sort of like if you're looking for those god rays sort of like lighting setups this is what you're looking for these nice shadows being cast in the atmosphere on the opposite side of the light um, spotlights are obviously the like one of the better light sources to use if you're just using a standard area light um, it's going to just light up the whole scene basically and you're not going to get this nice cut on the edge of um, that uh, of, of the light source um, so I'll get into lighting in a second um, but I just want to point out that obviously I'm still not getting a ton of information there um, so I could actually add in some more lights or just turn the lights around or whatever but I'm gonna leave this up to you to play with um, so you can sort of just play and figure out how you want to light your scene how you want to do your guy but um, if you're looking to do something kind of spooky with just a limited bit of lighting this is a pretty good place to start and you can see it's quite effective you get some nice contrast in there as well um, and yeah so let's have a look at the lights um, spotlights are really great um, in my you get a lot of control with them and they allow you in this particular circumstance um, to do quite a lot um, to control the where, where the lights hitting and how much of it's hitting so um, I've got two spots the the main one that you're seeing is this one that's in the front um, that's the one that's hitting on the right hand side here and it's just giving that hard white illumination and you can see it coming down here with the main light and then the penumbra on the outside of it and I'll explain what that is in a moment um, but for now I'll just quickly show you my settings uh, we've got the exposure set to 11 uh, so which is quite high it needs to be fairly high to pierce all that atmosphere the color is white you can change the color um, I'm doing this black and white just because it's um, like I said it takes a long time to render so the more polygons you got the more things that you have to deal with I haven't even UV mapped this guy or anything like that um, he is actually quite a high poly um, model but I just wanted something that was sort of thematically appropriate for this one um, but yeah your basic setting um, with this is um, on the spotlight if you bring if you come down to spotlight you've got your cone angle um, which is just basically degrees so if I hit 90 you can see it gets really wide um, and if I hit something like 20 um, you can see it actually affects the way it looks um, there's like an actual model of the spotlight which is really cool for visualization uh, gives you an idea of where you're pointing and stuff as well and just sort of a, a rough idea of like how wide how wide an angle of the light um, your model is going to be receiving so this front one is fairly narrow um, it's just set to 10 and the penumbra angle is set to 10 as well so the um, the umbra is the main source of light coming from the the spotlight so uh, this hard white light coming out here this is the umbra um, and then on the outside of that there's a dimmer sort of light and that's actually the light bouncing off the inside of the cone and then being shot out and that's called the penumbra um, so if those angles in Maya are the same then you won't see um, the penumbra um, if you raise that to say 15 degrees you'll see the penumbra outside of the umbra um, but for now that's not super important so um, this for this front light I just actually wanted um, I just wanted this basically this main light with with not too much penumbra um, and then on this backlight um, I'm using this as a fill light basically it's got a it's got a wide cone angle um, and no penumbra essentially um, and it's slightly um, less bright and you can see it's just hitting the back side of him um, to illuminate that and give me some more information on the model um, 
because this guy's got a big spiky back so I wanted to get some of that silhouette in there as well this is obviously not the best composition ever uh, but just for as an, as an example um, to sort of get you going I thought it would be a good one um, I'll also talk about another render that I've done using a different technique okay so here is a scene that I rendered a couple of weeks ago um, it's obviously a much more complex scene I've set up actually an actual environment um, you see that I've got some fog on the floor and then I've got these light rays coming through the window um, I did something slightly different here. You can see I've got a lot of lights in this um, in this render as well. Um, it's a little bit more complicated and I needed to touch some things up. So I sort of had to fake the light a little bit. Um, but what I've done here is I've got this, um, I've got this sort of like dungeon sort of thing happening. Um, and I've got these sort of cell windows with some light filtering through. Um, and I'll show you the render now. So you can see the light filtering through the windows. It's sort of broken up um, as it's hitting the bars, but it's lighting up the sort of atmosphere. Now, if you come back to the project, you'll see that I actually haven't filled the entire scene with atmosphere. There's only like a little atmosphere on the floor, and then these just streaks of light coming through the window. Um, so I've sort of cheated it a little bit, and I'll show you how I've done it. Um, and this is a good little trick that I sort of figured out. So when you're creating a fluid container, uh, if you get an example and you go to fluid, it will bring up um, a bunch of different examples and you want to go to cloud and fog and you want to use uh, rolling fog. And if you import that in just by right clicking and clicking import file, it will give you a new object, which is this. Um, now, straight off the bat, oops, straight off the bat you'll see that you've got this blue stuff and you may not want that, that's pretty easy to get rid of, you just click on it and you click delete, done, easy as that. Now you're stuck with this sort of smoky fog which I'm trying desperately, desperately to select. Uh, here we go, so let's move this up for a second. So you'll see that this isn't quite these light rays that I've got coming through here, but with a very simple transformation, um, we'll just scale that down a little bit and then stretch it out. There you go. You get something that's kind of similar to what light rays look like, because basically it's just stretched out these like clouds, smoke clouds um, that are part of that sort of example. But um, for this, it actually works really well as sort of like light filtrating through a broken up window. So yeah, um, now I'm cheating atmosphere here as well as something to keep, keep in mind because of the way I wanted to light this. It would have been too difficult and too, and too like render heavy to have everything lit up um, and um, with within one atmosphere just filling up the entire space. So keep in mind that when you, you're adding atmospheric lights, um, you don't actually see the light in real life. What your eye is seeing is dust being lit up, um, dust or, or water particles if it's fog or any or smoke or whatever. You're seeing that. You're not actually seeing the light. You're seeing the light bounce off a physical thing. So um, keep that in mind because you want to you want to trick people into making it look like it's a real thing that could actually happen in life. It needs to be believable even though it's like a render. Um, but you know you want to save time where you can um, because time is money um, and yeah and you can get a good result otherwise but um, just keep that in mind that's why I added this floor um, haze in as well just to add a little bit more atmosphere to the room even though the room itself doesn't actually have any atmosphere as you can see it doesn't actually have many walls or anything either um, but that's neither here nor there so that's another um, little trick that you can use and um, that's a that's a fun one that I like to use quite a bit. If you've got a narrow light source that's just um, like that doesn't need to um, sort of taper open then um, just these square dealios look pretty cool and you could probably use these light these like fog sort of things for a bunch of different things uh, a bunch of different types of light could be coming out of a grate on the ground uh, like out of a subway or anything like that so um, play around you'll probably get some ideas um, yeah and if you do figure out any cool things that you can render with it let me know in the comments um, share your renders with me um, I'll give you a link to my tumblr and you can always send me messages there as well um, but yeah, I'd be I'd be really stoked to see anything that anyone has learned um, and put into practice from these tutorials. So yeah, 
Uh, if you liked the tutorial, hit like so other people see it. That would be super cool. Um, I would be doing more tutorials in the future because I think they're super handy and um, I really like being able to help people out that are you know, trying to learn Myron and trying to learn RenderMan. So um, if there's anything that you see that I've done in any of these videos and you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure how you did that, ask me and I'll try and explain it. And if I can't, I'll just straight up make a tutorial. So yeah, I hope you like this one and I will catch you next time.